Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I want to talk with you guys about the 2020 slash 2021 uh, Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon. Now I have already reviewed this knife and uh, these are other than some uh, aesthetic differences and some blade shape changes. These are largely the same um, designs from 2017. Uh, and uh, you can go check that review out if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts on that. Um, I, uh, I decided to order mine actually before I had ever handled the 2017 version. Uh, there were some, some of my friends were talking about the release of this model, uh, and that I should, you know, check out Sharp by Design and follow them on Instagram, which you guys should too. And I looked at it and looked at it and I thought, yeah, I want that. In fact, I want the upgraded version in, in Damascus Steel. I'm going to talk all about this. Um, but, um, Essentially, uh, while I was waiting, because it took a long time, if you guys ordered one of these, you know that it took a while because of the complications that happened in 2020, right? Everybody, it was, everything was made difficult, right? So I was happy to wait, no problem. And uh, having waited and finally acquired mine, I will say that I am beyond pleased. I'm very happy. I've made this clear in live streams. I've talked about this knife on a couple other videos, but I've not dedicated a video to this. And I want to talk about that today. This is not going to be a review. In fact, I'm going to tell you guys right now, um, this is going to be a gush fest of a video. I'm going to say a lot of nice things because I'm feeling a lot of nice things. Um, if you want to check out the review, you know, the original review, you can, right? Um, but uh, if you don't want to sit around and listen to me gush for 20 minutes, I totally understand that. But that's what this is going to be. And I, I, I'd like to, you know, save your time um, if that's not what you're after. But I will go over specs, talk about the stuff, the differences between these two, the different variants that were available, and my thoughts. I just really want to do that. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. You can find a link for my Patreon right down in the description. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This you might be wondering, holy cow, I didn't know they did one in purple carbon fiber. Um, this is actually, uh, this belongs to Kyle Roberts 610 on Instagram. Thank you very much, Kyle, for sending this. This is actually the KNP edition or the Knife Nuts podcast edition. And if you don't know, I should have had this out and ready to go. If you don't know who the guys from the Knife, Knife Nuts podcast are, um, that podcast is excellent. It is extremely recommendable. They've actually invited me on for an episode. That was really cool. Um, but it's, uh, it, one of the hosts is uh, Brian Nadeau, um, who is actually the designer and um, the, the creator of these uh, these knives. So please check out the Knife Nuts podcast. It is a, a wealth of entertainment and great knife knowledge. I, I thoroughly enjoy all of those guys. But uh, this is the KNP edition. Uh, that's why it, it looks a little bit different. Um, we'll talk all about that. Let's go ahead and get some measurements here real quick. So the overall length, now this is the full size. There is also a smaller one. We're just talking about the full size today. Overall length of this guy's coming in at eight and a quarter inches. The blade length is actually coming in at, holy moly, just about 3.75. Yeah, it's like 3.7. And then your cutting edge is coming in at about 3.4 inches. So fantastic ratios on this guy. Holy moly, should we do some size comparisons? I think so, because some people are going to want to know. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, and whoops, that's the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Uh, it's a little brother, the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see here it's kind of closer to the size of the Rat 1, but it definitely is shorter. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3, I'm sorry, PM2 and Para 3. The Para, uh, PM2 is much closer to the overall size. It's just a hair longer. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and uh, the Mini Griptilian. And you can see here that this guy is a little longer than the Ritter Hogue. Um, we'll go ahead and just take a look at carry profile here real quick. Um, this knife is not an excessively thick knife. It's not thick at all, actually. It's nicely contoured, and you can see at its maximum thickness, it's maybe just a hair thicker than the Para 3, but that contouring really kind of, it kind of masks the feeling of excess thickness. It really does feel great in hand, and I want to emphasize that. Um, height and length up against the PM2 and Para 3. I'm starting to realize that if I zoom out just a little bit, it's actually probably a little bit better. I'm, I'm usually a little bit too close. Maybe I'll change that in the future. Uh, this is not a long knife. It's a little longer than the Para 3, a little shorter than the PM2, including the flipper tab. It's fairly tall because this is a pretty pronounced flipper tab. 
but it's still not quite as tall as the PM2. So I know a lot of people like to carry that knife. You'll find that this knife is actually very, very easy to carry for a lot of reasons. Blade stock thickness on, the guy, on this guy. This is my knife, so I don't mind touching it with the calipers. Uh, somebody else's, though, maybe wouldn't be the case. That's why the tape's on there, though. Blade stock thickness on this guy. That cannot be accurate. Maybe it is. Blade stock thickness coming in at... Yeah, okay. It's actually 150, saying 153 thousandths, probably between 150, 155. It certainly doesn't look that thick though. So if my calipers are wrong, I'll tell you, it looks very similar to the PM2 and the PM2, I believe is about 145 thousandths. So it's somewhere in that territory. This uh, particular guy is titanium. And then we have a marble carbon fiber inlay. Um, there is no milling on the um, inside here. Uh, it is all just titanium, but the knife does not come in heavy. Not at all. I'll weigh both of these guys here. Uh, this knife is coming in at 4.27 ounces. So that's going to be maybe a little heavy for some people, but I find this to be very reasonable, especially considering the size and the ratios for everything. This is within my preference range. It may not be for yours. It may not be legal for you because of the blade length. Um, but uh, yeah, they're exactly the same. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I find this to be very preferable considering it's a full-size knife. It does not carry like a full-size knife. It actually carries like a smaller knife, which is really preferable to me. That's something I really like. Um, so I know that I said this wasn't going to be a re more, as much of a review as it is just a gush fest, um, but it's still proceeding in kind of the same fashion. So there were a few different variants of this available, and I want to talk about all those. First off, I'm sure you're wondering, where can I get this knife? Where do I sign up for the next? So these have always been the way that they've done this in the past, they had the 2017 run. You could sign up for a pre-order, right? And you got a small discount um, or you could pay, you know, a little bit. They were like installments and you'd pay a heavier price. Originally, the standard versions, titanium and M390, uh, with your choice of a few different blade shapes, uh, you could get an exposed frame lock or not an exposed frame lock. There were a few different texture patterns you could get. And I think they had some inlay materials that would actually change the knife from an exposed frame lock to more of a countersunk uh, uh, frame lock that was underneath the uh, the overlay or the, the inlay. Um, so there are a few different options there. Um, I think the base price, you know, if you pre prepaid in full, uh, the original versions went for 300 and then maybe as much as 350 if you chose the installment, right? And then I think they did maybe some other special variants. The 2020 slash 2021 variants came in your choice of either Bowie or Harpoon and your choice of either M390 or Damasteel. They kind of did the same thing, uh, but it, here in 2020, it was if you paid in full for the M390 variant with your choice of, I think they had um, maybe some micarta, uh, they had carbon fiber, and then they did a DLC. You could have your choice of a tumbled frame or a DLC frame. And then, of course, your blade shape and blade material. If you paid in full, it was 350. Maybe it was a little bit more if you had to pay over time or something like that, uh, or in the installments. And then if you went with damage steel and paid in full, it was 515, or maybe as much as 550 if you paid, you know, a little, you know, in the installments, something like that. The KNP edition, um, the difference is, of course, you had the um, the uh, purple carbon fiber, and then um, the harpoon blades, um, you, which have the uh, uh, and the standard versions, the ones that originally came before the KNP editions, the fuller was solid all the way through on the harpoon, and it was open in the Bowie. They went the opposite with the KNP edition, and they did the open slot in the harpoon, and it was solid in the Bowie. So I think that's interesting. It might clear that up a little bit for some people. Um, but uh, these are Riot built, and I'm going to tell you guys right now, the prices, right? What they were asking is exceptional. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know that you guys can get, you know, combinations of carbon fiber, titanium, uh, M390, and uh, in some cases, damage steel for, you know, some cases may, maybe less or whatever. But what I'm talking about here is the build quality and design. Um, it is amazing the amount of quality that you're getting here, especially in the $350 variants. That is mind-blowing. These knives rival the quality that I have seen in knives that cost way, way more. I've definitely handled knives that are six, seven, eight hundred dollars that don't feel as good as this. These are excellent for the money. I'm going to go over every last little detail here, but we have beautifully, beautifully knocked down corners here. The inlay work is exceptional and nothing short of perfect. 
It is truly a seamless transition here. Somebody with their eyes closed would not be able to tell the difference between these surfaces unless they're really good at identifying what, what smooth carbon fiber feels like over titanium, but it is, the transition is perfect and it's the same way with this guy. It is fantastic. The biggest thing here, the biggest, uh, um, you know, it, it's one of, it's, the, it's you know, sometimes with knives like this, I really have to stress that people need to handle them. Um, if you're looking at this and going, it looks like another titanium frame lock, right? Handling this and experiencing it and flipping it especially. The action on these things, it's just unreal. It is so consistent. Uh, this is, it, they have this lip detent system I've talked about before that is, not a traditional detent ball. It's something that Sharp by Design does, and it's the reason, sorry, this thing is still set to like ramp, and I think it's running out of batteries, so it's being a little bit buggy. <laughs> Anybody who's ever messed with the Onderil UI knows kind of what I'm talking about here. Do we need to just have a different flashlight? Maybe we'll use this big boy today. Um, there we go. Can we ramp up a little bit there? Yeah, okay, so there we go. Um, you can see that little lip up there. Sorry, the thing's not wanting to focus. Can we get it to focus? Yeah, there you go. You can see that lip up there. It's not a detent ball. Now, I'm not going to pretend to understand exactly why this creates this experience, but for whatever reason, it is very crisp. That's the best way to describe it. Now, this flipper tab is not going to be ideal for everybody. Some people aren't going to like, you know, how this looks or maybe, you know, it comes to a point, but really it's not sharp. There's really just one position to lay your finger. This has one dedicated means of deployment. And it also suggests that there is one specific spot to put your finger. Now, if it's going to get that specific, it it needs to be really good. It, it at least needs to be really good. This is beyond good. For the one place that you are supposed to put your finger, because listen, you can push button it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd put my finger here where they want you to, right? This is the only way to deploy it. It is perfect. It is flat out perfect. It could not be better than that. Now, this is just my opinion. Maybe not everybody shares the exact same opinion as me. I don't want you guys to think that I take myself that seriously to suggest that there's no argument that could possibly be applied here. But in my opinion, versus everything else that I've handled and experienced, right, and especially considering that this is the only way to deploy it, it is perfect. It is going to deploy. You cannot fail this thing which is straight up with your thumb. It's just going to deploy. It is incredibly smooth and incredibly consistent all the way down. This has very, very nearly a fall shut action. In fact, I found that I can adjust that pivot just a little teeny tiny bit while still keeping the blade exactly on center, still keeping it solid and achieve fall shut action. It can actually be tuned that way without anything coming out of place. That's what I found with this. But they are very consistent. I actually really like the controlled action. I don't need it to fall shut. I just want it to feel consistent. I want it to be convenient and safe for me to deploy and close the knife. The tolerances on these knives are so perfect. And a lot of it has to do with the design. Riot obviously makes a good knife, right? But depending on the design, sometimes their quality translates differently. This design in combination with Riot's quality yields this amazing experience right so I, this is obviously owed you know a lot of this is owed of course to the original designer uh brian Nadeau. um but uh, it just translates so flawlessly and i think it's a real testament to the fact that he knows what he's doing it's really great i've handled some crappy knives at the 350 dollar mark and i've handled some crappy knives at the 800 dollar mark right that make this look substantially better this is beyond that, but it's also beyond a lot of great knives in those price territories. I've handled knives that I like that cost that much money, and I still like this more. <laughs> it's great. Little details like this lip that comes up to meet the pivot, how the pivot looks, right? The fact that we have a captive pivot and we have T8 screws across the board. It's minimal, right? We didn't do the hardware check. Don't worry about that. One screw goes right through, right? And then it's just, it's so simple and beautiful. It's perfect. Let's talk about, speaking of perfect, let's talk about ergonomics on these guys. Full-size knife gets your hand, you know, with room, ample room actually to move around a little bit. Not a lot of confinement. Some, suggest, uh, some suggestions on where to place your fingers, but you can move around. You have freedom and you are locked in. Definitely. It's amazing considering there's not a lot of, you know, it, it's not a it's not a, a crazy difference, you know, between these areas right here where you're supposed to put your fingers, right? And it's smooth. 
but I'm locked in. That's wonderful. The jimping extends out to the appropriate area, right? So you can definitely lock in, place your thumb up here, get traction without being uncomfortable. You're not a long ways from the start of the cutting edge, which is great because there isn't a forward choil. This thing is meant to be used. Speaking of being meant to be used, it is thin behind the edge right here. This is a compound grind, right? And you don't have to go with this. The Bowie is a continuous belly, right? It's a little bit thicker out here. You have a, a very versatile blade shape. And while it does change angles right here and might create a little bit of excess difficulty for somebody, you know, who's maybe more of a novice sharpener like myself, um, trying to change the angle and get it sharp over time, it shouldn't be that bad. It's not an aggressive transition. And like I said, there are bowies out there with just as a continuous belly, right? The tip is going to be, um, I, I think, nice and durable. The geometry of the blade is going to be nice and durable for your more aggressive breaching tasks, I guess. But it also is still going to slice really, really well. There's a flat that carries out to about, mm, maximum thickness is truly carried out to about 85%, maybe 80% the length of the blade. Uh, absolutely. So I, I don't, me personally, I don't question the durability or anything like that. I think the fuller looks great. Um, and it's not sharp enough or deep enough to where I really am going to worry about too much crap getting caught in there while I'm cutting. It's open enough to where simply taking a rag and doing one swipe should clean pretty much anything out of it. I wouldn't recommend cutting into things that are going to leave toxic debris in there and then using the knife for food immediately after, right? Just, you know, use your best judgment when you're cutting, obviously. I don't need to tell you guys that. Um, the ones with the opening slots, I'm sure some people wonder, can you access that to open it and do the reverse flick? That would have been neat, but you can't do it. It's really an aesthetic thing. Now, if you could imagine with me, if they did, <laughs> did my lights turn off? Sometimes the lights are on a time. Oh no, I turned, I kicked the thing out of it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, um, the, uh, you might be wondering, can I access that? And you, you can't. Um, it's just for looks. But if they were to change the handle profile to allow uh, addition, you know, for, for access to that, you know, change it back here, or if they were to make the blade taller uh, to allow access for that, it would have changed the aesthetic. I love doing that reverse flick. I love being able to do that with knives. So coming from somebody who does enjoy doing that, I'm really glad that they did not change the profile or the look of this blade to accommodate for that. I love how this looks. That's just me. You know, your opinion might vary for me, but I love how this knife looks. I love that the back is straight. And the line, oh, it's just so nice. I wouldn't change a single thing about this. I like the flipper tab. I like, of course, the access to the lock bar, which is raised just enough, knocked down in here, knocked down on this side. Every surface that you know, there, sometimes there are surfaces that are, or edges that are left sharp because it's very unlikely your hands will interact with those areas. That didn't matter here. They knocked everything down where it was appropriate. The only areas that are, you know, that have maybe some excess friction are areas that are, are meant to gain that, you know, the traction from the friction, like the jimping area, right? Fantastic. Every other line, every other corner is nicely knocked down. Even on the satin finished ones here, you can see they knocked this down. All of this is knocked down. It's beautiful. Look at the transition between the finishes, between the fuller and the hand rub satin blades, which is the case on the M390 variants. Those are hand rub satin blades. Fantastic. And the Damasteel <laughs> looks great. You can get, you know, Damasteel that's more or less polished, but this is proprietary. It's all, Damasteel is Damasteel, right? It's just the finish and the pattern that's going to change, you know, in terms of the, the etching on the Damascus and the polish, right? Uh, this looks great. The polishing on the Damascus is fantastic. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change a single thing. Harpoon blade. That was an easy choice for me. I love harpoon blades. If you don't like harpoon blades, I, you know, I understand everybody likes different stuff, but for me, harpoon blade, fantastic. I love that. I also like just having a little spot. If I really wanted to control like the, the little, the, the edge up here, really wanted to have that extra control. I like that. There's just a little bit of a notch that allows me to rest my finger there and manipulate it. Not that I'm a master knife user or have used my knives and all those different circumstances, right? But I, I like that I have the option. Even if that's never going to be something I use, I like that. The pocket clip is, a, it's perfection. I, I mean, and I wouldn't, looking at this, I would think I was a pocket clip, but then, I, you know, how it functions, it has this, this slight swoop, right? But this area is nicely knocked down. It's not pointy. The continuous rise makes this a breeze. One-handed in and out of the pocket is a breeze. It also carries essentially 
deep. I mean, this is it. That's what's sticking up out of the pocket. And there's one screw and it's a T8. And the screw doesn't make it difficult to push it all the way up against the back, right? It's also the screw that holds the knife together. Oh my gosh. The lanyard bar is there for lanyard people, but it's totally out of the way, right? This comes to a seam and that's fine because the seam meets up perfectly. And as you can see, the blade is freaking dead on. It's absolutely dead on. Uh, there is a, uh, a stop pin back here. That's fine. You can see we've got some shouldering actually. So the, uh, sorry, it's wanting to focus back there. It does wrap around that stop pin and lock up extremely well. No blade play up, down, left, or right. We have fantastic engagement and geometry on the lock face. And there is a steel lock bar insert, by the way. Uh, there's no part of me that um, feels like there's a chance this is going to disengage. Um, the deployment is made um, you know, even simpler by the fact that uh, most of the lock bar is hidden underneath this, um, this inlay. So you can pretty much put your fingers wherever you want and it's always going to deploy. No matter how hard you squeeze, you're really not going to affect the geometry. Sometimes on an exposed frame lock, you squeeze really, really hard. It's going to stay locked in, but you might be grinding that lock bar further into the, um, into the lock face and you might be decreasing the life of lock bar a little bit. I, those of you who own exposed frame locks, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, do I have an inferior design? No, you don't. I'm just saying for those of us who nitpick little teeny tiny things like that, that may not really matter. You know, I mean, it's like, oh no, your frame lock's only going to last for, you know, 40 years as opposed to 60 years. You know, it's like, it's, well, I mean, it's, it's a silly thing maybe to complain about, but I like that it, it that is the case. I love that. Both of these have been centered. In fact, you, you know, hearing from other people, I've found that everybody pretty much has the same experience. The lockup is always in the same place. It's always solid. <sighs> this is, this is masterful. And it's, this is largely, you know, I'm saying the same things that I said in um, the review of the, um, the 2017 edition. Um, but I love this so much. And the, the, cha the small changes that they made um, you know, in the blade shapes and the fact that they're all uh, inlays now, none of them are exposed frame locks. I just, I, I love that. I love this so much. And I, I do, you know, look for things. I try to comb over these knives and look for things that I could legitimately complain about. And I'm sure there are some people who could pick out, you know, parts of these knives that they find less than ideal, right? And that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and claim that you know, if I say that this is a perfect knife, then that's absolutely going to be the case for everybody. No, but for me, this is a flawless design for what they went for, right? It's not to suggest that um, partially exposed frame locks that are underneath overlays, right? And knives that are made by Riot and that are this exact shape, right? It's not to say that they're, you know, always better than everything else. But for what was, you know, what, what uh, Brian and Doe was attempting to do with this, for, uh, for the design that it was intended to be. I think every last thing that should have been considered from the perspective of just some guy, I'm, I'm just some guy. I'm some guy on the internet who likes knives. There's no difference between me and and, and, all, and everybody who's watching this video, right? Except more, there are people out there who have way more experience than me, right? I, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy. I sounded like I was reducing my audience. <laughs> no, I'm fully aware that there are definitely people who watch my content who knew way more than me, right? What I'm trying to say is I'm just an average dude who likes knife, right? Knives. From my perspective, everything that should have been considered was considered. And then substantially beyond that, obviously, because Brian Nadeau is a knife maker and knife designer. Of course, he's going to consider things that I never considered. The end result was a perfect design. This is a perfect knife. Now I have my own weird little enthusiast, you know, things that I, I like the novelty of an overbuilt knife. I like the full titanium and the textured titanium, right? But when it comes down to a design that I'm going to appreciate from the perspective of a collector, from the perspective of an enthusiast, and from the perspective of somebody who's actually going to take his knives out and use them, even though I honestly have not used this knife yet, but I do have experience using the 2017 model because I owned it. Um, this has everything that I could want in a design like this. It does. There's, there's nothing that I would change. Um, this, this is a flawless knife. And I, I don't know, um, if I've said that before I I've said like, I like this knife more than any other knife, even though it has flaws. I had for talking about the XM 18, right. Or I like the, the, the Demco. I love this, but there's little elements that aren't, you know, that I don't consider necessarily perfect for me or maybe, maybe for some other people, but 
gosh, if you guys have ever wondered, is, is there a knife out there that he really does consider flawless and just trying to come at it from the perspective of, you know, from multiple angles, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, this this is it. Um, you know, I, I hope what I'm saying makes sense, right? There's certain knives that bring me joy for different reasons. Um, this knife brings me joy because the design is just so it's just so good, right? If you don't like knives that are, you know, manufactured by Chinese OEMs, and if you didn't know, Riot's a Chinese OEM, but they're arguably the very best. In fact, their quality exceeds um, you know, the quality of some um, really good U.S. manufacturers, right? And some people may not agree with me. It's not always the case, but Riot is largely considered to be um, the very best uh, Chinese OEM uh, when it comes to, you know, overall fit and finish. And that's why Brian Addo decided to go with them, or at least I assume. He does do his own full custom knives that are made here in the United States. And those are a lot more expensive. So essentially, um, I think the biggest thing here, the, the biggest positive is that you're able to get Brian Nadeau design quality in a knife that costs substantially less than a true Brian Nadeau custom. Um, I've handled uh, the Arch Nemesis, um, very expensive. That one that I handled was nearly $2,000 and it was exceptional. In fact, that was the most, that was the highest quality custom knife I've ever handled, right? Um, but I can't sit here and tell you guys that the difference between this and that is that substantial, dollar for dollar, right? Um, they're both excellent. It's like that, <laughs> this is one of the best, dollar for dollar, it's one of the, the, the most amazingly priced knives out there, especially if you if you appreciate these little qualities and elements, right? If you don't appreciate that stuff, then it's not gonna be worth it to you, but his customs are the greatest I've ever felt, and this is far and away the greatest thing I've ever felt in this price territory, right? <laughs> I can't say enough good here, guys. The only downside to these is that you can't just go get them whenever you want. You can't go get a brand new one whenever you want because it was, you know, three, it was almost three years between uh, the, the original versions and these this newest run. I don't know if he plans to do them again. I, I would imagine so. As of right now, you're confined to the secondary market. But while I don't often send people directly to the secondary market on this channel, I will tell you, these are worth seeking out. Um, they will age well. Uh, they will not get wiggly and wonky. Or, I mean, periodically, you're going to have to adjust the pivot, but this is low maintenance. Um, this is the high quality, dependable cutting tool. It's meant to last. It's meant to be used, right? These are worth spending the money on. If somebody offers you, uh, you know, a reasonable price on one of these and it's, it's what you want, go for it. These are exceptional. I can't say enough good about these guys. Kyle, thanks so much for sending in your K&P edition. I wish I had a Bowie to show you guys, but I don't. And I may, I'm hoping you guys got enough from this. But um, yeah, extremely, extremely recommendable. This is wonderful. I hope I touched on everything. I hope I said everything I originally intended to. But I'm sure you guys get the point here at the 27-minute mark. Thanks so much to my uh, generous uh, patrons for, for supporting me again. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.